and welcome to Catalan News. The disputed Sixena works of art are no longer at the Lleida Museum in Catalonia. In the middle of the night, 10 Spanish police vans arrived at the museum. Officers and art specialists entered the building when the demonstration outside was at its lowest. As morning broke, protesters grew in number and tension with the police mounted. Yet, in the end, the items in question were taken out, and this move has had its impact on the political campaign. The vote is only 10 days away, and today at Catalan News, we'll interview a candidate for the Coupe Party. It's been a years-long dispute between Catalonia and Aragon. The cause? 44 works of art located originally in Sixena, Aragon, but bought by the Catalan administration in the 90s. As political tension for the independence debate rose in the past few years, this issue has increasingly become a hot topic as well. Now, with the Catalan self-rule seized by the Spanish government, the final move has been dealt. Or at least, so it seems. The Sixena works of art have been removed from Lleida Museum. The van carrying the pieces arrived at the Sixena Monastery this afternoon, where a small crowd waited for the arrival of the 44 items that a judge ordered must be returned to Aragon. But the operation started much earlier in the morning. At around 4 a.m., Spanish Guardia Civil police entered the Catalan Museum. Police vans with officers and specialists also arrived, while some 50 people gathered outside to protest the removal of the artworks. While Spanish police officers and technical experts were removing the artifacts, the tension between protesters and police officers mounted outside. Among them were representatives of different Catalan parties, which described the action as a humiliation for Catalonia. The Catalan authorities have long argued against relocating the Sixena pieces on the grounds that the artworks were legally bought and that they are too fragile to be moved. Hi ha obres aquí d'aquestes 44 que tenen un alt risc de pèrdua i de pel que fa a la seva conservació, perquè en aquest moment estan estables a la reserva, però que no es poden traslladar sense una conservació prèvia feta. Meanwhile, Sixena locals welcomed the works of art and said they could help the local economy. Para nosotros es la alegría no solo de una comarca eh, deprimida que ve una posibilidad de tener turismo también con estos valores, sino también es, es la lucha de gente durante décadas que ha visto que, que era muy difícil conseguir este retorno. This is just the last chapter of a long legal dispute. About a month ago, a judge in Aragon ruled that the work should be returned to Sixena. After Madrid's takeover of Catalonia's self-government, the Catalan position became much weaker. With the Catalan culture minister dismissed, the Spanish culture minister decided not to appeal the ruling and ordered the items to be returned. However, the relocation is being carried out according to a provisional enforcement and before an appeal can be put before the court. With the December 21st Catalan election round the corner, all parties running have had their say. Most of them have been firmly against the removal in this key moment for Catalonia. Out of the seven parties set to get seats in the Catalan Chamber, only two approve of the move, while five have shown opposition, including the Socialists, as well as Together for Catalonia's main candidate, Carles Puigdemont. Fixeu-vos la destrossa que ha provocat ja poques setmanes de vigor del 155. Obrir la porta del 155 vol dir això, vol dir, per exemple, que t'espolin el patrimoni, vol dir que es contradigui la llei de patrimoni de Catalunya, vol dir que es contradiguin sentències del propi Tribunal Constitucional sobre aquestes peces i que es faci més a més baixant el cap. Em sembla desmesurat haver d'utilitzar l'ús de la força, insisteixo, per aplicar una mesura que no és definitiva, perquè no hi ha sentència ferma, però en tot cas, escoltim, respecte a la resolució judicial, no la compartim. De totes maneres, nosaltres, òbviament, com a demòcrates, no podem posar-nos en contra que se cumplen les resolucions judicials. Creu que les resolucions judicials se deben cumplir, i si hi ha alguien que crea que no se deben cumplir las resoluciones judiciales y si quiere sustituir al juez que lo diga, pero me parece que ese no es el funcionamiento normal de un sistema democrático. The Sixena Art episode today has been one of the main talking points for parties running in the election. Yet, it hasn't been the only one. Increasing clashes between parties within the pro-independence and the unionist blocs are becoming more significant, and the debate over who will be the next president of Catalonia is also a source of much discussion. 
One of the main debates ahead of the election is who will be able to take office as president. Together for Catalonia's Carlos Puigdemont says that he will be back from Belgium if he's elected president. Meanwhile, Esquerra's leader, Uriol Junqueras, from prison, is also determined to take up the office of president should his party prevail in the ballot. In fact, an academic report commissioned by Esquerra claims that Junqueras wouldn't be barred from the presidency because he's only in prison as a precautionary measure. The paper says that he will be able to take up his post as an MP and attend the parliamentary debate to appoint him president. Junqueras today asked the Supreme Court to release him so that he can take part in the campaign. In the meantime, the same court has ordered that the investigation into the independence case be extended to other officials, such as Esquerra's Marta Rovira. The judiciary continues to be part of the debate, but a new note are the clashes between parties in the same bloc. The pro-Spain Unity People's Party today criticized the also Unionist Citizens Party. Its leader stated some days ago that voting for the People's Party would mean throwing one's vote in the bin. Uns objectius que en algun aspecte doncs coincideixen inclús amb el que està plantejant eh, el líder de Ciutadans, el senyor Rivera, que està dins de la seva obsessió doncs de és la de eh, enfonsar, debilitar el Partit Popular. At the other end of the spectrum, the Cup party is skeptical about the intention of Scarra and puts them on together for Catalonia tickets to continue with the independence roadmap. Uh, ya diversas forces políticas uh, compromesas en, en aquesta qüestió i esperem trobar-les el dia 21 con construint república. In fact, the far left Cup has said that it will only support a government that is committed to implementing independence. Today, we finish our series of interviews with the seven parties set to get representatives in the Catalan Chamber. And we do it by interviewing a candidate for the Coupe Party. The Coupe is a far-left pro-independence candidacy. In this election, its leader is Carles Riera, but the party doesn't think in terms of single leaderships. Instead, it talks about common ones. In the 2015 election, it got 10 MPs, but it played a key role for pro-independence parties to win the majority in Parliament. Now, it's set to play a defining role again. For the last two years, it's pushed Puigdemont's cabinet to declare independence as soon as possible, regardless of Spain's attitude. Now, its officials say they will only support a government that enforces the Catalan Republic. We can speak now with writer Belolid. She is number six in the Coupe candidacy for Barcelona. Ms. Olid, good evening. Your party says that the Republic has been declared and that now it's time to make it a reality. But how can you do as such, considering Spain's response so far? Um, good evening. Uh, we know it's not going to be easy. It's not being easy and it's being a very long process. But um, with um, the help of people in the streets and with the power of people in the streets pushing for it, um, it's the only way to really accomplish um, the, the project of the Castle Republic. Uh, Coup Crida Constituent is actually the only party that's a guarantee that our representatives in the institutions are going to push for this republic. Uh, so together uh, with the people in the streets, it's um, working every day and, and showing uh, Spain and Europe and the world that we really want a republic and that we are not going to stay in a country, in a state that's uh, as repressive as Spain right now and that's really um, destroying our civil rights. Uh, if we show this every day the way we have been showing this in the, in the recent weeks and, and months, um, there's no way to stop us. The next step, you say, is writing a constitution for the Catalan Republic. How do you plan to do so considering what the current circumstances are? Mm -hmm. um, for us, the writing of the constitution is actually the, the main objective of, of becoming a republic and of uh, letting people organize and, and show how we want to, to live as, as people together. Um, so we are looking uh, at the world and at the different uh, constitutional processes that have, that have been a model for us, such as the one in Iceland, for example, and we want a constitutional process that's going to guarantee that everyone can participate and it's not a constitution written by seven white old uh, men uh, who are powerful and rich like the Spanish constitution that we are um, abiding right, right now. Coop says that all dialogue with Spain should be suspended until all imprisoned Catalan leaders are released but can you really solve the ongoing political conflict without dialogue? 
Mm-hmm. Um, it's not that we don't want a dialogue with uh, the Spanish state, it's that they have shown uh, several times that they are not going to, to speak to us and they just want to have it uh, to have us as, as subdits and they want to dictate all the laws and, and they don't even let us um, uh, pass our own laws, uh, for example, preventing people from uh, dying or...